My name is Tony Green. I'm a professional artist and a professional jazz musician from New Orleans in Louisiana. I've been living in Venice, Italy since 1982. And uh, what I did, I got an offer I couldn't refuse. I was renovating houses in Washington, D.C., where I was attending the Corcoran School of Art in order to pay for my college. And I was working for an English woman who was the governess for a couple of kids of a very important Venetian family here, the Zorzis. And she suggested that I contact them because she knew I wanted to get back to Europe and that maybe they'd have some sort of accommodations for me, which they did. It turns out I wrote them a letter. And about a month later, I got a reply. This is before email that uh, they just purchased a palazzo and would I be interested in living in the palazzo in exchange for doing some work? And I thought about that for about three seconds and said, yeah, I can do that. You see, what's happening to Venice is something that's happening on a global level, okay? It's about reduction of the quality of life in general. So as people become more and more addicted to their smartphones and their computers, you know, it's in preparation for the implantable microchip. So. We're just, the people have no attention span whatsoever, but the good news, you know, everybody's traveling. Unfortunately, because they have a low attention span, they're not doing the study on the country that they're visiting or the city. So, so many people come here to Venice, they come in the big cruise ships. Now, the cruise ships, sometimes there's eight to ten cruise ships a day with about 4,000 people on board. So, you do the math, all right? So, these people come and God bless them, they should travel. But unfortunately, they're not prepared for Venice. They know nothing about Venice. So they come in, get a slice of pizza, Diet Pepsi, have a selfie on Rialto Bridge, and then back to the ship. And what happens is that now the city is starting to cater to those people because that's the majority of people that are here. The Venetians rent out their apartments as bed and breakfasts, Airbnbs, and so now the hotels are suffering also because nobody's going to a hotel when you can go to Airbnb and pay a fraction of the costs. And then the businesses that are set up, they're set up for the same kind of people. So it's Chinese crap, okay, and lots of it. So what has happened is that Venice is becoming like a big cruise ship. Mm. It has all the same stores you find on a cruise ship, mm. all the same people, and it's just a big time Disneyland and uh, it's choking the streets and you know, everything that made Venice great is, is forgotten, and that's all part of the totalitarian tiptoe, which means the, the slow but consistent destruction of culture, complete, deliberate dismantling of craftsmanship in favor of short attention span zombies, as you see today. They're prostituting their culture, okay? And it's the Venetians are the ones to blame for this because they vote for these people who make these laws and, and allow these things to happen. I mean, those ships that come into dock, from what I understand, it's like 30,000 euro they have to pay in docking fee. So you get eight to 10 of them a day, do the math on that. So that's a pretty easy answer. But it's really about, you know, again, the, the destruction of uh, culture. The same as <coughs> Mao Zedong, you know, it was the model when uh, you had the Cultural Revolution in China, all right, where they had 80 million Chinese killed. You want to talk about Holocaust? Do some homework on that. They're not going to tell you that in universities, though, mm -hmm. because you're, meanwhile, memorizing, repeating all this useless information. Mm -hmm. But it's a global thing that's happening, and Venice just happens to be one of the victims of this, uh, of this trend. So what it is, today's Italians, are the custodians of the 3,000 years of culture that went before them. The wonderful architecture, music, art, sculpture, literature, etc. They're the custodians of it, not contributing anything to it. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's Italians are going to be the destroyers of it because they're going to start pulling down statues. They don't want to offend the Muslims, for example, because you're going to be brainwashed to believe that everybody should be equal, mm -hmm. okay? And that's all part of the communist takeover. All right. Have you heard about the slogan they have now, the Enjoy Respect Venice? It's, all it's just a slogan that's put up there that's absolutely meaningless. Because if they really respected Venice, they wouldn't let all these ships come in, would they? 
And if they really respected Venice, they wouldn't let all this proliferation of bars and restaurants that are happening now. Mm -hmm. There's no regulation on that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If they really respected Venice, they'd let painters paint in Piazza San Marco. Did you know that painters cannot go in Piazza San Marco and paint anymore? You can't set up an easel and do that? Really? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Fine for it yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have friends that that happened to. Big story. Big story. A guy called Ken Howard, who's 86 years old, probably the greatest living English painter, traditional painter, or did portraits of the Queen. He's been painting in Piazza San Marco for 60 years. Okay, they, they ran him out. So these are the kind of draconian laws that are put into place, you see, because it's not so much about, they're just using tourism as a weapon. It's a weapon, just the way they're using all this illegal immigration as a weapon. It's weaponized integration. And kids your age, you see, you're getting the full force of the propaganda and social engineering so that you accept all this and you think it's all good without going and studying history and coming to your own conclusions. So about this uh, mass tourism, you should go and find out why it's happening, who's doing it, and what the end game is. Mm. Or I'll give you an analogy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You have two male deer. They're fighting each other. It's left against right. Black against white. Muslim against Christian. Rich against poor. And off in the distance, this lion picks up the scent of these two idiots not paying attention. So what does the lion think? Lunch. I'm going to get a good meal out of this. You know what that lion is? Artificial intelligence. It's people that don't pay attention to what the real problem is. Okay. They're being distracted. Right. Distraction, distraction, distraction. And the more you distract people and get them from finding out what the real source of the problem is. Like you have all these cures for cancer, you know, run for the cure, great stuff, you know, everybody doing. No, you need to run for the cause. You need to find out what the cause of cancer is, not cures. Because the cures play into the control of government because they become the new daddy. Oh, daddy, solve this problem for me. Do something about the tourism. And what do they do? They make the problem worse because you can, then you become more dependent. Yeah, because I don't really see, I don't see any warriors out there that are stopping this. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Because men, I mean, men, what happened to men? They're all soy boys. You know what a soy boy is? You know what soy products are? Soy milk, soy coffee. Well, do homework on what soy does to, the, to males. It kills their testosterone, makes them more feminine. That's why I see these guys now, and they, got the, they do their eyebrows, and they got the soft little hands, and everything's all perfect, and they're being more and more feminized. Because you don't want warriors around. You don't want warriors that are going to stand up to this attack on our quality of life, on our culture, mm -hmm. using mass terrorism, using mass immigration, using 5G, Wi-Fi, fluoride in your water, okay, chemtrails, all this stuff. All this stuff, your generation is gonna get the bomb of all this stuff, unless you do something. And you're starting right now by doing, filming me. It's a, it's a deep thing, but hopefully I'm planting some seeds. And when you put this out there to your students, that they'll forget their university memorizing and they'll go out and do their own research, exercise analytical thinking, come to your own conclusions, and most of all, don't believe anything I say.